Greetings YouTube, this is Ihani and I would like to share with you guys some of the plants that I've been working with, that I've been growing. Um, I've been spending quite a bit of cash on succulents and cacti and learning about them <clears throat> and basically working with them on an energy level as well like meditating with them, understanding how they grow and by um, visualizing their patterns and I've had lots of understanding come from it, so I'm going to later in this video, after I show you my plants, uh, share with you some visions and some insights that I've had on being a gardener and being someone who likes to spiritually connect with the plants and to grow them too. So I'm going to now show you my plants. Okay, so all of them here, um, they're all unique. Some of them are succulents, some of them are considered as cacti. This one here I actually got from a cutting, just up the road from where I live, um, there was a very large bush of this succulent and I just took a little cutting and it, it was very small and I just, it just got very funky and very large and it's growing little ones on the side of it. This one here actually just flowered uh, today uh, and yesterday, it's got like a, it's got like a crown all around it. You know, it's really interesting. Um, and this one's flowering in a very cold season. It's like, it's just entered winter here in New Zealand. So, yeah, here's, here's one of my favorites. I, I just love this one. I love the pattern on it. It's so beautiful. Um, and this one here, it's quite nice. Uh, the names of them, I can get the names of them very easily by just going online. And going on Facebook, there's some um, pages. There's some Facebook pages that are um, all around cacti and succulents and you can just post a photo of your cactus and they will identify it for you straight away. Um, but yeah, like half of these cactuses I've got the labels but some of them I just don't really worry about them. Um, so this one I, I just love so much as well. I mean look at that. Have you ever seen, that's like a piece of art, it's a sculpture, you know? Uh, this one here is really nice, let me just move this out of the way. I mean, Look at that. Yeah. Um, I've had that one for quite a quite a few years. These ones I grew from cuttings. And I have to tell you what's really interesting about this plant. Um, it's actually related to this plant over here. And I know these these look like aliens. They they look so extraterrestrial and so and so strange. I mean, look at that leaf. Have you ever seen that before? Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about this plant over here, which is actually about to flower right now. This plant that I'm showing you, if you look at the leaves, you can kind of see how um, the leaves have like little grooves. Hold on, let me just zoom in correctly. Um, if you look over here, do you see that little, see that little bud right there? It's a very small one. Uh, let me zoom in correctly. Yeah that thing right there, they grow all along the leaves and then they drop off and then they start growing at the bottom and I've actually I've actually transplanted them into other pots you see so these are the babies and they're so cute they're just the most delicious little fractals um, hold on let me I actually just I just did this one over here I'll show you to, uh, just today I did this here um, so this is actually a cutting of that of that very large one that I showed you. It's it's relatively fast growing. I got these weeds from the garden just to make it look nice. And I put a crystal about two centimeters, three centimeters below the roots of this one. So he's actually getting um uh energetically um upgraded by the light programming within the crystal. And so I put crystals everywhere with my with my plants, you know. I put them. See, there's a piece of a pop for light, a uh, piece of quartz. It's a very very high quality quartz. This one here is also a uh, euphorbia, I think. Uh, I got this little this little chameleon just for the fun of it. But um, I just love this is like one of my favorite ones that I've grown. I mean, it has such a nice uh, patterning to it, and. So yeah, just to get my hands to show you how big it is. Uh, and this one I just did today. Uh, it's, um, I forgot the name of this one, but in the summer and in the spring, 
it has these purple flowers, like it, like like so many of them, and they and they and they give off a really really pungent, very strong aroma, like it's the most delicious smelly flower that you'll ever smell from a succulent, um, and they're purple as well, so they kind of activate your crown chakra in a sense. So um, I'm actually growing quite a few of these. Um, I'll show you a larger one of these, the same species. Uh, this one here. So yeah, that's the ones that have the purple flowers, and like to be honest, it's the nicest smell. It feels, it smells like creation. It smells like a higher vibratory en energy. Um, so here's some more. I've had that one for quite a few years as well. He's got some babies right down there. Um, I got some up here. Sorry if my 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 phone camera is not really focusing that quickly, but I'm just trying my best. This one I actually bought. I'll just move it to another part. This one I actually bought just yesterday, and I mean, look, look at how tall it is. It's so it's so skinny as well. Like, I mean, look at it, and it's growing right at the top. Wait, let me try zoom in. Yeah, right there. So, I mean, it's really, really cool. Very, very large. Um, these ones I also bought yesterday. I mean, look at that pattern. And this one I've had for quite a few months as well. It's a very, very slow-growing succulent, but absolutely beautiful. It's got the most... It's got, like, little fur. It's got this very fine hair. It's growing all along its leaves and petals. I love it so much, and this one's also uh, kind of furry, so you you can you can give it like massages. It's it's a very very nice tex texture, furry like a little panda hand or something like that. I think this one's called panda hand or something like that, but I don't know the exact name of the plant. I mean, look at that. Um, this one I bought. Yesterday as well for twenty dollars. It's quite big as well. So here's my hand. I'll move it to the other side. Like I'll put it in the sun a little bit better. If you can see. So yeah, um, the the old flowers are right there, and they dry up, and I guess at uh, another season, they're gonna start growing straight from the top again. I've got a small greenhouse with just some babies that I'm growing so this is the euphorbia that I showed you with all the crystals like the little apophyllite and the clear quartz the same same specimen I just took a little cutting of it it's another succulent these ones I took from my friend's garden uh, this is this one here I took a cutting from this one It's quite a it's quite a tall one. I've had him for four years, three three or four years. Um, this one here, you guys might like. You might you guys might recognize as well. Um, this is the Pachinoe, which is the uh, psychedelic cactus, um, also known as San Pedro. Um, there's a few different type of offspring variations, but these are the baby ones. My friends uh, was growing like fifty of them, very large ones. Um, they're legal to have here in New Zealand, but it's illegal to uh, take and extract the mescaline from it. Um, so the people in the native, the, the native people in America, I'm pretty sure they've been using it for shamanic journeys and stuff like that. So this one's quite an old one as well. Um, so yeah, it's psy psychoactive cacti. Um, see, I transplanted those ones as well. I got this one here, the pine cone. So to me, it's like an art form. It's really like not only taking care of them, but you know, potting them, giving them energy, making sure that the water is programmed correctly. And I do feel like an energy that they give off. Like each single cactus and every single succulent have its own type of uh, unique energy. So yeah, this one as well. Once again, I apologize for the crappy zooming in. I'm just using my iPhone here. Um, this one's also a succulent that I got given. 
this one's really really beautiful let me just show you in the lights boom look at that it's a really really nice one I think it's from um, Madagascar or somewhere in South Africa and I put some light codes <laughs> all around it just for the fun of it so yeah he's a very very slow growing plant I think he's almost 18 years old he's a very ancient plant and he's generally quite small um, I got this one here very juicy leaves or petals um, this one here is quite nice got a very shiny dark green texture color um, he's got a little baby growing on the side so yeah um, yeah I got another one here I think it, this one's somehow related to an aloe vera but completely different and so yeah I mean I'm I'm always buying them and trying to expand my collection some of them are a bit more expensive than others but it depends on the on the um, how rare they are. So some of these cactuses are very rare so they'll be more expensive and some of them are very easy to grow so they're a bit cheaper. Uh, so this one's got a very very nice pattern as well. It's called Toxic Milkshake. It's actually a hybrid that was um, released in 2006 and they have a very very nice milky white color similar to this. In fact they look they look kinda similar uh, when they grow up but yeah, I just love that geometry. Yeah. Here's a pine cone. Spiral shell. This one's also the same species as this one. And as I was going to tell you, that species and that species are related and they do the same thing on the sides. When they get very mature, they, they start growing all those small buds that can drop off and then regrow. Okay, so I would like to share with you some visions and some insight that I've had regarding this whole experience collecting and growing these cacti. So when I was very small, as a little child, I was having a lot of dreams, a lot of visions, a lot of uh, psychic experiences regarding the extraterrestrials and other beings that would transmit information to me in my dreams. I had a vision multiple times in my life, but it reoccurred when I was about the age of 13 or 14. I went to basically like a hyperspace in my dream where I was reconnected with all these other civilizations and entities and beings that were part of my family, my star family, my Arcturian and multidimensional heritage we were all together as one family and they were showing me on an astral level uh, what it is like to be in other societies because they're reactivating my astral body or reactivating my physical memory or my multidimensional memory in my physical body and they were showing me all these different realities and different dimensions and other civilizations and they it was beautiful it was difficult to describe I've described it in other videos like shimmering cities of light on a fourth and fifth dimensional spectrum um, fractal-like buildings that shimmered and morphed and were vibrating and were emitting light and sound and music and there was this telepathic network connecting all civilizations, all worlds, all star systems. It was this beautiful online... It felt like you came online. The same thing we have on the internet. We go and we log on Facebook and we get online into a greater network. The same thing as in these other civilizations and these more advanced cultures it is a feeling of being online and being connected to like a multi-dimensional stream of connectivity and that's what I experienced in this dream when I was about 13 it was a very strong visual experience and it lasted forever it's one of those dreams that lasted like it was like eternal it was like this eternal feeling of going and being taught all these things and being reactivated and having all these memories it went on and on and on and then it came to this point in the dream where they told me, okay, you've come to Earth for a reason, 
blah, blah, blah. They told me these things. And then I got this vision of a garden, like these beautiful, timeless Greek gardens, these gardens that had geometry in them and they were circular and square and there was this extension of trees and fruit and, and plants and succulents and water and music and fire and all kinds of elements combining people meditating, people being a part of this collective, this greater collective. And I had a feeling that I would have to be a designer or an architect or someone that would have to nurture the plants, that have to create these gardens, like divine gardens. Gardens where people can meditate, people can do qigong, people can breathe, can, can be part of the natural environment, can hear the birds, can feed the birds, can hear the water, can look at the beautiful colors of the flowers and the trees and the leaves and really feel the energy and be connected to the fractal energy. The fractal, and I always mention energy a lot, but that's the best way I can put it. It's an energy that moves through all things, that animates all things in the movement of dancing and, and vibrating and waving and blossoming and flowering. And it is like if we live in cities, if we choose to live a life where we are surrounded with all this noise, cars, pollution, unhealthy e eating habits, unhealthy behavior, um, disconnection from our own subconscious mind, we're being basically disconnected from the natural stream of things that moves through the plants, that moves through all animals, through the natural ecosystem. It's the field. And we can be tapped into the field when we walk barefooted in a garden, when we touch a tree, when we touch a plant, when we mesmerize at the flower, when we appreciate the pattern that is within the fractal cactus. That's, that's what I'm talking about. It's the appreciation, it's the connection, it's the ability to see, to sense, to feel the natural world. And my heart has been opened. I've been enlightened by the plants. I've had psychedelic experiences with the plants, with the mushroom, with the marijuana, with the salvia, with meditation, with qigong, with the plants, being with the plants, visualizing the plants. It's brought me life. It's brought me wisdom. It's brought me memory. It's even shown me how we can create cities around the pattern of a flower instead of a block, instead of a, a square. We can create housing like domes, like futuristic flowers that almost like the city or the building will not only be a flower, it could move, it could rotate, it could spin, it could have a type of movement, a music, it would dance. The architecture of the future, the gardens of the future will be full of life, full of music, full of happiness, of joy, of connection. That's what I feel. Now, I've had visions as well of being in a possible future timeline on earth where it's very polluted in the outside world or it's very you know surrounded with chaos or havoc or something's going on on the planet like there's some type of manipulation going on there's some very crazy environmental thing going on very intelligent architects people designers artists musicians people who are awakened or who have awakened their soul through the greater expansion, they come together and they create these beautiful dome-shaped, um, like a crystalline or a glass-type material that could cover large stretches of land, kilometers, you know, like megalithic domes. And a dome, not only is a dome, it can filter light, it can even um, hold filters on the bottom that could maybe filter in air, let's say if the outside is toxic, the inside would have to be cleansed or purified through a filtration system so there'd be a constant flow of purified air, of purified water and then within that dome-like structure there would be all these beautiful villages and beautiful um, structures and gardens but all based upon geometry so it would be based upon tetrahedrons, dodecahedrons, uh, triangles, uh, symbols within the pattern of creation, which is sacred geometry, which is the quantum 
pattern. It's the imprint of God, the imprint of the creative code. When that is established in this kind of architecture, we can live within this kind of uh, environment. And not only can we be, we be uh, sustained through clean air, clean water, uh, natural life like birds and fish and r rivers and lakes and whatever, we can also build like all kinds of structures like villages and little buildings that would be also based upon that architectural um, fractal if you know what I'm speaking about so I have visions and ideas of that and a gardener is not simply someone who goes and plants flowers or someone who goes and plants trees a gardener is look at the word gardener garden guarding guard the gardener the gardener is one which guards the natural world, that allows the light to be, that shields and protects from unnatural sources, that is almost like a magician, a sage, a wise caretaker of the world. A gardener is a guard, like an angelic guardian, an astral guardian, maintaining the natural world, giving to the natural world, making sure that all of the species, insects, birds, plants, crystals are all in harmony with each other. That's what I see and that's, and that's what I feel. I feel like I want to be a gardener. I am a gardener. I'm just kind of in the beginning stages of it, learning and kind of experimenting with cactuses and succulents and everything. So that's my video and that's my vision is I want for all of you to understand that, that we are all gardeners. And we can all be caretakers of this world because humans are at one of the higher stages of consciousness on this planet. Like we're almost like above the animals in a sense. We're not really above them, but we have a very expansive ability to move materials around, to communicate online. We have the network and we have the power and the tools and resources to expand further and to create an equality within not only um, ourselves as a society but within the natural world why are we always hearing about oh we have to maintain the survival of a plant we have to maintain the survival of this survival survival you see that's where that that's where we that's where we are at on a global level survival we're not here to survive we're here to thrive we're here to expand to blossom to to extend beyond survival because survival is simply just getting by, just being fed, just sleeping, pooing, and existing, just at the bottom level, like the base chakra. Birds have other chakras. Plants also have other chakras. Um, you have all kinds of animals and, and life forms that don't only exist on survival. They exist on sexual pleasure or sexual energy. They exist on their confidence center. They have their heart center. They have their throat center. They sing. They express. They've got their own psychic sense. They've got their uh, almost like a extrasensory perception of being able to see in the dark or being able to um, uh, sense heat or you know all these things. A psychic sense. A telepathic connection with the natural environment. They have the pituitary gland, they've got a crown chakra, they've got higher chakras connecting to the universal stream of other dimensions, pulling light into their body, into their physical existence. That's what I'm talking about. We only have to realize that within ourselves, transcend the kind of fearful survival behaviors of ourselves, and then bring that wisdom to the rest of the world, including the plants and animals and ecosystems. Not for survival, but to thrive and to go beyond to allow all plants and all animals and all life forms to evolve and to go further. That's my message. That's what I would like to speak about. So thank you guys for listening. Many blessings and I'll see you guys in another video. So they'll be more expensive and some of them are very easy to grow. So they're a bit cheaper. Uh, so this one's got a very, very nice pattern as well. It's called Toxic Milkshake. It's actually a hybrid that was... Um, released in 2006 and they have a very very nice milky white color similar to this in fact they look they look kind of similar uh, when they grow up but yeah I just love that geometry yeah
is a pine cone. Spiral shell. This one's also the same species as this one. And as I was going to tell you, that species and that species are related and they do the same thing on the sides when they get very mature. They, they start growing all those small buds that can drop off and then regrow. Okay, so I would like to share with you some visions and some insight that I've had regarding this whole experience collecting and growing these cacti. So, when I was very small, as a little child, I was having a lot of dreams, a lot of visions, a lot of uh, psychic experiences regarding the extraterrestrials and other beings that would transmit information to me in my dreams. I had a vision multiple times in my life, but it reoccurred when I was about the age of 13 or 14. I went to basically like a hyperspace in my dream where I was reconnected with all these other civilizations and entities and beings that were part of my family, my star family, my Arcturian and multidimensional heritage. We were all together as one family and they were showing me on an astral level uh, what it is like to be in other societies because they're reactivating my astral body or reactivating my physical memory or my multidimensional memory in my physical body and they were showing me all these different realities and different dimensions and other civilizations and they it was beautiful it was difficult to describe I've described it in other videos like shimmering cities of light on a fourth and fifth dimensional spectrum um, fractal like buildings that shimmered and morphed and were vibrating and were emitting light and sound and music and there was this telepathic network connecting all civilizations, all worlds, all star systems. It was this beautiful online. It felt like you came online. The same thing we have on the internet. We go and we log on Facebook and we get online into a greater network. The same thing is in these other civilizations and these more advanced cultures. It is a feeling. Greetings YouTube, this is Ihani and I would like to share with you guys some of the plants that I've been working with, that I've been growing. Um, I've been spending quite a bit of cash on succulents and cacti and learning about them <clears throat> and basically working with them on an energy level as well, like meditating with them, understanding how they grow and by um, visualizing their patterns. and. I've had lots of understanding come from it, so I'm going to later in this video, after I show you my plants, uh, share with you some visions and some insights that I've had on being a gardener and being someone who likes to spiritually connect with the plants and to grow them too. So I'm going to now show you my plants. Okay, so all of them here, um, they're all unique. Some of them are succulents, some of them are considered as cacti. This one here I actually got from a cutting, just up the road from where I live. Um, there was a very large bush of this succulent, and I just took a little cutting, and it it was very small, and it just it just got very funky and very large, and it's growing little ones on the side of it. This one here actually just flowered uh, today uh, and yesterday. It's got like a it's got like a crown all around it. You know, it's really interesting. Um, and this one's flowering in a very cold season. It's like, it's just entered winter here in New Zealand. So, yeah, here's, here's one of my favorites. I, I just love this one. I love the pattern on it. It's so beautiful. Um, and this one here, it's quite nice. Uh, the names of them, I can get the names of them very easily by just going online. And going on Facebook, there's some um, pages. There's some Facebook pages that are um, all around cacti and succulents, and you can just post a photo of your cactus, and they will identify it for you straight away. Um, but yeah, like half of these cactuses, I've got the labels, but some of them, I just don't really worry about them. Um, so this one, I, I just love so much as well. I mean, look at that. Have you ever seen... That's like a piece of art. It's a sculpture, you know? 
Uh, this one here is really nice. Let me just move this out of the way. I mean, look at that. Yeah. Um, I've had that one for quite a quite a few years. These ones I grew. Um, this is the Pachinoe, which is the uh, psychedelic cactus, um, also known as San Pedro. Um, there's a few different type of offspring variations, but these are the baby ones. My friends uh, was growing like 50 of them, very large ones. Um, they're legal to have here in New Zealand, but it's illegal to uh, take and extract the mescaline from it. Um, so the people in the native, the, the native people in America, I'm pretty sure they've been using it for shamanic journeys and stuff like that. So this one's quite an old one as well. Um, so yeah, it's psy psychoactive cacti. Um, see, I transplanted those ones as well. I've got this one here with a pine cone. So to me, it's like an art form. It's really like not only taking care of them, but you know, potting them, giving them energy, making sure that the water is programmed correctly. And I do feel like an energy that they give off. Like each single cactus and every single succulent have its own type of uh, unique energy. So yeah, this one as well. Once again, I apologize for the crappy zooming in. I'm just using my iPhone here. Um, this one's also a succulent that I got given. This one's really, really beautiful. Let me just show you in the lights. <sighs> Boom, look at that. It's a really, really nice one. I think it's from um, Madagascar or somewhere in South Africa. And I put some light codes <laughs> all around it just for the fun of it. So yeah, he's a very, very slow growing plant. I think he's almost 18 years old. He's a very ancient plant and he's generally quite small. Um, I've got this one here. Very juicy leaves or petals. Um, this one here is quite nice. Got a very shiny dark green texture color um, he's got a little baby growing on the side so yeah um, yeah I got another one here I think it, this one's somehow related to an aloe vera but completely different and so yeah I mean I'm I'm always buying them and trying to expand my collection some of them are a bit more expensive than others but it depends on the on the um, how rare they are so some of these cactuses are very rare from cuttings and I have to tell you what's really interesting about this plant um, it's actually related to this plant over here and I know these these look like aliens they they look so extraterrestrial and so and so strange I mean look at that leaf have you ever seen that before um, so let me just tell you a little bit about this plant over here, which is actually about to flower right now. This plant that I'm showing you, if you look at the leaves, you can kind of see how um, the leaves have like little grooves. Hold on, let me just zoom in correctly. Um, if you look over here, do you see that little see a little bud right there? It's a very small one. Uh, let me zoom in correctly at yeah, that thing right there. They grow all along the leaves, and then they drop off, and then they start growing at the bottom. And I've actually, I've actually transplanted them into other pots, you see? So these are the babies. And they're so cute. They're just the most delicious little fractals. Um, hold on, let me... I actually just, I just did this one over here, I'll show you. To, uh, just today, I did this here. Um, so this is actually a cutting of that, of that very large one that I showed you. It's it's relatively fast growing. I got these weeds from the garden just to make it look nice. And I put a crystal about two centimeters, three centimeters below the roots of this one. So he's actually getting um, uh, energetically um, upgraded by the light programming within the crystal. And so I put crystals everywhere with my with my plants. You know, I put them. See, there's a piece of a pop for light. 
a piece of quartz. It's a very, very high quality quartz. This one here is also a uh, euphorbia, I think. Uh, I got this little, this little chameleon just for the fun of it. But um, I just love, this is like one of my favorite ones that I've grown. I mean, it has such a nice uh, patterning to it. And so, yeah, just to get my hands to show you how big it is. Uh, and this one I just did today, uh, it's, um, I forgot the name of this one, but in the summer and in the spring, it has these purple flowers, like it, like, like so many of them. And they and they and they give off a really really pungent, very strong aroma. Like it's the most delicious smelly flower that you'll ever smell from a succulent. Um, and they're purple as well, so they kind of activate your crown chakra in a sense. So um, I'm actually growing quite a few of these. Um, I'll show you a larger one of these, the same species. Uh, this one here. So yeah, that's the ones that have the purple flowers and. It, like to be honest, it's the nicest smell. It feels, it smells like creation. It smells like a higher vibratory en energy. Um, so here's some more. I've had that one for quite a few years as well. He's got some babies right down there. Um, I got some up here. Sorry if my f my uh, my phone camera is not really focusing that quickly, but I'm just trying my best. This one I actually bought. I'll just move it to another part. This one I actually bought just yesterday, and I mean, look, look at how tall it is. It's so, it's so skinny as well. Like, I mean, look at it, and it's growing right at the top. Wait, let me try to zoom in. Yeah, right there. So, I mean, it's really, really cool. Very, very large. Um, these ones I also bought yesterday. I mean, look at that pattern. And this one I've had for quite a few months as well. It's a very, very slow growing succulent, but absolutely beautiful. It's got the most, it's got like little fur. It's got this very fine hair. It's growing all along its leaves and petals. I love it so much. And this one's also uh, kind of furry, so you you can you can give it like massages. It's it's a very very nice tex texture, furry like a little panda hand or something like that. I think this one's called panda hand or something like that, but I don't know the exact name of the plant. I mean, look at that. Um, this one I bought yesterday as well for twenty dollars. It's quite big as well. So here's my hand. I'll move it to the other side, like, I'll put it in the sun a little bit better. If you can see. So yeah, um, the, the old flowers are right there. And they dry up, and I guess at uh, another season, they're going to start growing straight from the top again. I've got a small greenhouse with just some babies that I'm growing. So this is the euphorbia that I showed you with all the crystals, like the little apophyllite and the clear quartz, the same same specimen, I just took a little cutting of it. It's another succulent. These ones I took from my friend's garden. Uh, this is... This one here, I took a cutting from this one. It's quite a, it's quite a tall one, I've had him for four years, three, three or four years. Um, this one here, you guys might like, you might, you guys might recognize as well. 